Hey, how are you doing guys? Lewis here with Fedivo again. And today we're gonna to have a look at a new social media AI craze that I can't seem to escape from Instagram Reels. We're gonna run through the process so you know how to do it too. And it's where users are taking a 16 by nine film in its original widescreen horizontal format and placing it into a nine by 16 vertical social media composition. But instead of resizing the video so it fills the entire frame, they leave the bottom and the top areas blank, then use generative AI to fill these areas. Do I hate this? You know, it is harmless fun. I guess it's not really what the cinematographer had intended, but then I guess at the same time, filmmakers didn't really intend to have their films uploaded on a smartphone um, where the viewing screen is nothing but a small rectangle. So I'm not gonna go on any sort of AI tirade, but instead we're gonna jump into DaVinci Resolve and I'll walk you through the steps on how to do that. All right guys, so I am inside of DaVinci Resolve. It doesn't have to be DaVinci Resolve, it can be Premiere Pro, it can be Final Cut Pro. Um, the NLE does not actually matter. Um, you're gonna wanna bring all of your video clips in and we're not working from clips from a feature film. These are just fantastic clips from the Fedeva library. Although I have tried to keep it in the vein of Lord of the Rings as that was the example I showed you earlier. And there are two things that you're gonna to want to know when selecting the video clips, uh, when expanding the um, vertical properties. And that is, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that first the clip is static. And what I mean by that is that there's no camera movement, no tracking, no panning, uh, no tilting, no handheld. It needs to be locked off completely. So this is great. This is a completely still shot. And when I press play on this one, I did think, oh yeah, this is a, this is a static shot. Of, you know, it's gonna be great to use. But in fact, if I scrub through it, we can see that there's some form of movement. So that's not gonna be any good. And the next, is while that you can have movement within the frame, like we see here, the guy moving from um, the lower third to the upper third of the, uh, the composition, you don't want any movement like this, where it's at the bottom of the frame going out of the composition, because the generative fill uh, is not gonna be able to create uh, generative water in this case. So again, this too would not be any good. But these examples are pretty decent. So what you're gonna wanna do is all at once, but I will just use the one video clip, is grab a screenshot of each and every piece of media that you're working with. Now in the Resolve, uh, as we've seen here, I've already done a number of times, we just grab the still and export it. Uh, in Premiere, you of course have a little camera icon somewhere that you can press to grab a screenshot or the very simple solution, fill screen and then press print screen. Next, we're gonna open up Photoshop beta, select new file and go 1080 by 1920 to create a vertical composition at a nine by 16 and then paste in the screenshot. Now, it, when we resize the image and you do that by pressing Control T for transform. Be sure to grab it from the mid anchor point here because as we decrease the size, it stays in the center of the frame, which is what we want. Whereas if we do it from the lower corner, as we can see, it's shifting it upward. So again, just grab that from the midpoint. Great. Next, what we're gonna do is grab the marquee tool uh, this is M on the keyboard or select this icon with the rectangular marquee. And we're gonna create a selection while overlapping a slight bit of the image. Okay, that's great. Then select generative fill and I'm gonna type expand blue skies with the occasional cloud. Now Photoshop doesn't always get it right off the bat. So you might have to play around with the prompts uh, a little bit, but it does give you quite a few Ooh, I really like that one. Mm, it's gonna be either three or two. I think I'm gonna go with number two, simply because um, in the water reflection, we don't see a lot of clouds. And I think, you know, we've got a cloud right up there. So yeah, go with that one. Okay, that's great. So again, go down to here, and we're gonna do the exact same thing. Get a little bit of it in, type in expand stone path with lake reflection. 
and snowy and snow. Let's see if this works. I'm not too optimistic about this being great off the bat. I have a sip of my hot cup of coffee and hope for the best. Oh, do you know what? That's actually, that's actually not bad at all. What are some of the other... Ooh, okay, okay. Number three, ooh. Hmm, choices, guys, the choices. Do you know what? It's a tutorial. It's not to be submitted to a client. I'm just going to go with this one. I kind of like that. There's something by there. <laughs> That's supposed to be... I uh, wonder if we can actually just clone stamp that out. There you go. That's a bit better. It's not perfect, but um, I think that log looked like an amalgamation of a metal log and a plastic bottle. All right, I'm pretty happy with this. So now what we're going to do is turn off the original image, turn off the background layer and select save as copy, go to PNG. And there's one I've done earlier, stone path vertical. I'm going to override that. Now what we can do is finally go back into DaVinci Resolve and change the timeline resolution. So we're going to go to timeline, untick project settings, and then tick vertical resolution. So we don't have to play around with the number inputs. Now, what has happened is by default, the 16 by nine footage has just been cropped. And typically if we're just making footage for social media, this is what we would want. Uh, but instead we're going to have to zoom this down until it fits the frame. I think zero 320 is where I need to be. Let's grab our PNG, bring it in and expand it right the way across. And that looks pretty legit. <laughs> it looks pretty legit. I mean, I think if you were to pixel peep, I think we are going to see some issues at the bottom, maybe, maybe some, some blurriness. But at the end of the day, it's being used on social media, guys. Um, it's going to be compressed. Um, and I think this is this is fine for for what we're making. Um, if you did want to take it one step further, what I would probably do is group these together, select new compound clip, and just put a stone path. Now that's just a singular clip, and then what we can do is go into color, add grain, and then maybe just bump this up to 35 millimeter, increase your opacity. It just gives it a little bit of grain. It's probably not even that noticeable, but that will help blend the two uh, composites together. And uh, this is pretty much it. Now it is on you to decide what film you're going to do this with. All right, so very cool, a bit of fun. It'll be interesting to see what films and what TV shows uh, can be done with this. Again, you need to have the camera static and you need to make sure that there's no flow in motion in and out of the top of the composition. Other than that, Photoshop beta is your friend and be sure to tag us in social media if you followed this tutorial and created your own set. Uh, we'd be interested to see what you know. Remember to subscribe. My name is Lewis and I'll catch you guys next time.